One of the key themes that's coming out of a lot of the conversations, a lot of the uh, presentations is around leadership. So um, to take that forward, I'd like to invite Raymond from um, Smart Austria to talk to us about excellence in leadership and being fit for 2020. We believe that the wisdom and the knowledge of the group, benchmarks within the company, can enhance learning and performance effectively and efficiently. Uh, we go to London, we go to, uh, I don't know, all over the world actually, to, to find out uh, good benchmarks. But the experience is, and we did it uh, the last year very successfully, that's much more, uh, it works much better. Uh, if you want to bring a change about in your company, uh, if you do, if you search for internal benchmarks. Uh, so the program of the last year, for example, was with uh, the sales department and the regional managers. Uh, we wanted to uh, to cut down our wages uh, in the stores. And what we did is that we brought together all the managers, and then we we invited them to share what they do. And then uh, one month later we invited them uh, to, to show the results. And then again, a month later, uh, we again decided to focus on one special uh, measurement, for example, 
and we try to find out what the effects are. So it was a learning journey. It's not a training course of four days or so, and you immediately see the effect. And the managers have to, to put it in practice. And we succeeded. Uh, we, I think about 8 million euros we could, we were able uh, to, to pay less than last year. Um, output of an analysis is a long-term training plan, you would say, okay, of course. And constant and permanent training makes success more likely. But what is new about it? You could say, okay, that's normal, I understand that. But the regional managers have less training days, or fewer training days, than, for example, our apprentices. We invest six days a year for our apprentices. We invest about two days for our uh, sales department, for our regional managers. Experienced employees, employees get less training, not more, because you're already doing a great job. There's no need to send you to Harvard or to Yale or something like you work, you know, and get your work done uh, and make money. Uh, we normally think in a one year's term because our financial system works that way. And training is often not based on analysis, it is not customized. Uh, maybe it's, it's this only happened in Austria, but sometimes managers come and tell me, you know, I have some, some money left. <laughs> and there is this employee, and I would like to reward him. Uh, do you have any idea of a good training course? Of course, we do a lot of, of uh, very well-planned training, especially for the young people. But when it comes up to the more senior levels, uh, we tend to be very, uh, you know, to, to decide very on a short-term level. So, and I choose the, the, this video uh, because I read the book, I mean, and yesterday I met a friend of him, <laughs> uh, of Alex Ferguson, uh, and actually I think Dennis is, is mentioned in the book, and it's a great book, it's called Leading, uh, and I saw it on the airport, you know, you go, you have time, you wait, and then you go to the bookstore, and that was this book, and I just flipped through it, and. Next time when I was in the airport, I decided to care about it. And I bought it. Um, and I want to read the sentence because there are so many great things actually in this book. I was astonished. And I'm not a real, I'm not a good football player. I'm not a, a totally, uh, I don't know, crazy football fan. But I like to watch Champions League and so on. He says, on our own team, the best players tended to be stickless for preparation. That's part of the reason why they were good at or great. David Beckham, Brian Gates, Cristiano Ronaldo, and Brian Rooney would all stay after training to perfect their free kicks. They would not disappear for a long bath or a massage or be straight out the door because they had to run down to a car dealership. They would be religious about spending an extra 30 minutes trying to bend balls around the row of mannequins and pass the goalkeeper. That's why Beckham became a master of taking free kicks from between 25 to 30 yards from goal and kicks from between 80 and 30, uh, 23 yards, while Rooney was better and closer to the penalty box. And you saw Ronaldo and you saw uh, how good he is. Uh, and this statement, I think, is a statement about training. Training really uh, is necessary, training really works, training really so our objectives, what are we doing? We want to, uh, within 12 months, uh, we start in June, uh, we want to do an assessment with regional managers. Uh, and it's not common to do assessments with managers you have for 20 years in your business. You do it with young ones. Actually, we do it in one, uh, in one training program. Uh, I do, it's called Excellence Program, and it starts with an assessment. Um, and we want to be very transparent about potential and performance. Performance is measured by the figures of the stores, of course. So we are going in the historic data and finding out, okay, how do you do it as a manager? Um, and it will be very transparent, so we will tell people what we see uh, and what we think. We will focus on performance critical issues. It's not about, we're not expecting that they are able to dance or something like that. We are expecting them to know their business. And all we do in this assessment center will be straightforward uh, focus on the business, daily business routine. 
uh, individual feedback on behavior and uh, on the impact they have, and we give them concrete suggestions. And it will be a training plan, not for one year, but for one, two, three years, fit 2020. This is the design. We start with an assessment in Chile, and we end with an assessment. So the idea is it's an ongoing process. After three years, we do the next assessment. And I think um, if, you, if you're thinking about football and sports, uh, you wouldn't accept that, I don't know, in 10 years, Ronaldo would say, okay, I'm Ronaldo, I'm, I'm not going to train. You know, he has to. If you want to have the leading team, everybody in the team has to train. And we had talks about it, uh, you know, he's usually trying three years. Really, you should go to the assessment. Are you sure? Yeah, we are sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, we are designing individual training uh, plans. We will have a talent conference in our regional uh, distribution centers. So we will look at the potentials, but we also will look uh, at the people who really need more support, and we will look at our talents and try to find out how to uh, really to keep them uh, in the company and help develop them. Um, of course, we will be in real training measures but all the organizational development measures. Actually, it could not be that in one uh, development center, we, we take the, the, the regional managers together again uh, and focus on one topic in performance uh, of the region that's crucial and do such a learning journey with one, and invest one day a month over a year. Um, and of course, we will adapt, adapt our, our actual training offer. <coughs> So that's a detailed plan. It's, it will be very important how we communicate it. So that's why I took the picture. Uh, actually, the term FITS 2020 was the one uh, important point. I wanted a positive uh, image for this program. Uh, we don't use uh, the word assessment at all, actually. Um, before the program, uh, the supervisor will uh, give Praise uh, their, their, their regional managers. We will uh, look up for the performance results of the last year. Uh, in the assessment, we will use uh, an online questionnaire. It's a benchmark tool. Uh, it's called PEP. Uh, we will do the assessment, and then they get a confidential feedback. Uh, that's very important. Uh, nobody should have the feeling that he, I don't know, is, is, uh, should be embarrassed. But we want to, to help uh, everybody uh, to get better and, and to, to learn. So um, we are very careful. For example, for the uh, online questionnaire, uh, the talks we will, to, to a good extent, we will invite external trainers uh, to, to, to have this feedback talks because uh, we want them to show that we, our interest is uh, to support them. Our interest is not to to embarrass them at all. Yeah, then they get a feedback by the supervisor uh, and, and one from the HR department. Then we will have the talent conference, and then we will uh, go on with our individual training plans. Just one one slide for the how we how we uh, try to figure out which competences are important. Here is one leadership competence. And we try to, to find out uh, in which in which uh, in which settings we can uh, really serve uh, here in the, the assessment center. Uh, if if he does, if he has a competency, or if he has a potential to uh, to do that. So, what are the challenges and the step stones? Uh, first, I think. Uh, Individual learning experiences are often negative. Uh, people, of course, are a little bit afraid. I mean, a little bit of rumor is going through the organization. Uh, and it will take uh, a lot of uh, good communication uh, to, to, to help people come over. Uh, I think when we first start with it, uh, they really will see uh, it's, it's just like, I don't know, if you if you want to run a marathon, you go to your doctor and he takes your, uh, I don't know, 
blood and all this, and, and gives you, and uh, you get a training plan. That's the idea. So uh, nobody has to be afraid because he's in the team. Nobody gets kicked out of the team. Um, because if there would be one, uh, it should have been done already. So that's not that's not the, the, the aim of the assessment center. Yeah, the experience at sexual players see no need for training, and of course not for an assessment. <laughs> uh, they would say, okay, I'm doing a great job, you know, uh, so no need at all. But uh, all the, the CEOs and all the, the <coughs> managers from the distribution centers agree, so we will do that. and. Uh, at least half of them are very positive. <laughs> the first one, actually. So, uh, and we will win the other three. Uh, but uh, they're committed uh, to go on. Yeah, and that's what we will do. And next year, I can tell you more learnings. Uh, we never did it that way. So we focus on, on, on managers, on top managers uh, in our sales department. Uh, we really try to, to do an assessment. We try to look over a long-term period, not just one year. Uh, and we really want to uh, customize training. And we want, if, it's, if it works out and if it's, it's, it's a good idea, to bring people together uh, for uh, come for a learning journey uh, and for an improvement uh, in our business. And if you want, and we had a, we had a great project actually last year. Uh, it ended in March this year. Uh, the CEOs gave a group of us uh, a store, and they gave us money. And they said, you can do what you want. And we did. <laughs> uh, so we changed the food and vegetable uh, department. We, we changed the cat, the checkout, and so on. Um, and I worked there. And if you work there for one a week or more, uh, you see how important sales managers, the regional managers are because you know, in a store there's, there's so many things are going on, uh, so many tensions or so many um, yeah maybe problems and so on. And if you if the regional manager is not very sensitive and he if he's not able to be with his people, uh, he will not realize at all what's going on. It's logical because uh, the team in the store uh, they depend on the store manager. And if the retail manager comes, they will say, no, it's great. Tom is a great store manager. He's fantastic. <laughs> because they know uh, the retail manager goes away. Um, and actually, it's crucial. So we did a lot of, of uh, the project would have been more successful, I think, if, if it would have been better uh, in our recruiting according to the store manager and uh, according to the retail manager. So that's why we try to focus uh, on this uh, very uh, important uh, uh, factor of success in our business. 